O gracious Dark Lord, bring this man back from death. No. Oh, Satan, I... What? Oh, it's just a Satanist book. Benji Thomas, one, two, three. Oogly boogly, bring him back from the dead. No, I don't think that would work. I haven't got a whale. Or a shark. Icky, icky, Austrian death warrant. Susan and our great YouTube subscribers bring our friend back. Oh, this is exhausting. This one just says, no, I'll try it. Benji Thomas Rise. Ben? Starting off the news this week is a report from NASA on how the InSight probe's tests are going on Mars. InSight landed on Mars in 2018 with the intention of monitoring its geology, in particular focusing on learning more about Mars quakes. Since deploying its sensors, it has detected more than 450 of these quakes, but none particularly big. The BBC commented that the size and frequency of the quakes are not dissimilar to those of the UK. Along with its other sensors and equipment, InSight aims to more accurately map out the planet's below-surface geology, including the rock layers throughout the planet and the tectonic plates. In other news, the World Health Organization, the UN's health body, has said that the world community needs to prepare for a coronavirus pandemic, as more and more cases are reported in an increasing number of countries. The outbreak has not yet been called a pandemic, but James Gallagher, the BBC's health and science correspondent, has said that pandemic is just a word, and nothing officially will change about the response of the world community. It's worth noting that despite the panic that has been caused across the world by the virus, the coronavirus is not an especially dangerous disease, with the fatality rates mainly affecting the elderly and those already affected with respiratory problems. Next is something we missed last week, and that's the sad news that the legendary Argentine paleontologist Jose Bonaparte has died. Among his many other contributions to science, Bonaparte was largely responsible for getting Argentina recognised as such a significant locality for dinosaur fossils, and described all sorts of iconic animals from this area, including Carnotaurus, Abelisaurus, Soltosaurus, Amargosaurus and Argentinosaurus, as well as a lot of other species. A truly great paleontologist, his legacy will never be forgotten. And now over to Ben, who should be alive by now. Some good old pliosaur news up first, as this week an interesting paper on a discovery from Russia was published. The paper explains how slightly older pliosaurids tend to be larger in body size than known late Cretaceous ones, as well as that the younger ones seem to lack some features associated with a macro-predatory lifestyle, suggesting some sort of decline before their extinction in the Turonian stage of the Cretaceous. However, the paper also notes that the record of pliosaurids from around this time isn't actually that good, and here report the discovery of a huge vertebra centrum from Russia in rocks of Cenomanian age, the stage just before the Turonian. This new specimen suggests the pliosaurid it belonged to was one of the largest members of this group, comparable in size to other taxa such as Cronosaurus, and that therefore the apparent trend of a decrease in size in the late Cretaceous is more to do with sampling bias than a reflection of reality. Or if it did happen, it happens later, closer to the extinction of the pliosaurids. 
Next up, you may remember that back in November we reported on a study which claimed that the amazing dromaeosaurid Halschiraptor was actually not semi-aquatic as had originally been interpreted, but instead a kind of transitional form between non-dromaeosaurids and dromaeosaurids. Well, now a new study by one of the authors of the original description has been published, explaining why the transitional interpretation is incorrect and that the semi-aquatic nature of the dinosaur is still a valid explanation. Carefully investigating and testing the contradictory interpretation, this new study finds the idea that Halschiraptor was transitional and not semi-aquatic to be based on misinterpreted anatomical traits and bibliography, and that when properly analysed this dinosaur does indeed represent a specialised, derived group of dromaeosaurs adapted to a semi-aquatic lifestyle. Halschiraptor shows convergences with spinosaurids, as well as most closely resembling the living sawbill birds in terms of their ecology and morphology, according to the research. So it does seem as though this bizarre little dromaeosaur was the duck raptor after all. Back to Doug in the studio. Thank you, Ben. How are you feeling after being dead? It's fine, I didn't need to know. That's it for this week's Seven Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed it. Leave a like if you did, and feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, we'll see you on Sunday.